Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back, or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. So you might remember my recent-ish video on my puzzle collection tour, which I'll link up the top in case you haven't seen it, but if you did watch it, you'll probably remember a couple of things. One, I have a lot of puzzles, and two, I mentioned that I wanted to do a sort of declutter video in the new year. Well, this is that video. So uh, since I did the puzzle collection tour, a couple of things happened. I actually got a brand new puzzle shelf um, to fit in my spare room. So that actually got a lot of the clutter off the floor, which is really good. But it also helped me sort of pick out some more puzzles that I wanted to add to my declutter pile. And I've sort of built up quite a declutter collection around me. Um, so um, when I say declutter, I mean like, and yeah, if I use the terms not keeping my collection, declutter, getting rid of, what I mean is they're either going to be uh, given away to someone I know, donated to like a charity shop, um, sold somewhere, or swapped for another puzzle with like another puzzler. So they're the sort of things I'm thinking of. Um, so in a sec, I figure we'll go through all the puzzles I'm planning to declutter and yeah, why it is that I no longer want to keep them. So I've got quite the mix and quite the amount of puzzles surrounding me that I want to declutter. Um, it's quite a mix of brands and styles and that sort of thing and piece counts. Um, so I've got a bunch here from the brand Holston and I've got a few more from them on another in another pile, but we'll go through these ones first. Um, so yeah, basically I've got a couple collections on this pile here. Um, one collection is the Mistress of Pride Lands. Um, and basically they feature these sort of very strong, heroic, beautiful women surrounded by equally beautiful uh, large cats or like jungle cats or savannah cats, that sort of thing. Um, so this particular one's called Birds of Paradise and I guess they're like leopards or cheetahs or I'm not too sure, jaguar. I don't know, I need to brush up on my big cat knowledge, I think. Um, but these are all by the artist Jan Patrick Krasny, I think that's how you pronounce it, and they're really beautiful artworks. There's no doubt about that. And um, they're, they're a little bit kitsch, a little bit 80s, I think, but you know, they're really detailed and really beautifully uh, done. Um, so it's not the, re the artwork is not the reason I'm decluttering these, it's actually the piece quality. Um, so unfortunately for like such beautiful artwork, um, I just feel that the quality of the Holdson pieces just doesn't match. Um, so what I mean by that is, I'll just pop this down. Um, I just find the pieces, they're, they're sort of a cardboard um, piece, but they're very thin and the, cut, the, like the fit is really, really loose. So you definitely absolutely cannot do a puzzle pickup. Uh, the, if you try to pick up any section, it just turns into individual pieces. And the other unfortunate thing is anytime I accidentally bumped or nudged my puzzle, I just send a whole section kind of like into chaos and have to like redo that whole section. So yeah, real pity about the quality, um, especially since this is a New Zealand brand, which is reasonably close to Australia. I'd like to consider it kind of local. And so, you know, I was really hoping that there'd be some more like good quality local brands in this area of the world. Um, but it is what it is, uh, you know, I hope maybe one day they can, you know, change their, the way they make their pieces and improve the quality. Cause you know, like a lot of these puzzles aren't, you know, they're fairly at least average, like priced quite, I guess in an average way, like they're not super cheap. They're not the most expensive, but like for the price, you certainly would expect them to be of a higher standard, I guess, or at least I do personally. Anyway, so yeah, that's so, that's pretty much the reason why I'm decluttering all of the Holton brands. I think I'm holding on to like one that I really like. Um, I mean, I like them all, but yeah, I just feel like I've probably um, had enough of this design and some of the other designs I can get by other, like in other puzzle brands. Anyway, um, so I'll just quickly show you the others in this series. Um, so this one's really, gorgeous it's called queen of the leopards so it's very egyptian themed and yeah she's surrounded by her beautiful leopards and yeah the colors are really pretty in this one um so yeah definitely like that one um very beautiful and what 
us. Oh, we've got like a sort of, I guess, I guess Indian inspired. It's called, oh yeah, Indian Harmony. It's this beautiful lady with her, I guess, is it a sitar? The like that instrument um, and these beautiful like vivid tigers. So that one's pretty. That might even be one of my, the fa my favorite in the collection. I'm not sure. And then, oh, so this one, you'll probably notice it's still got its shrink wrap on. So I haven't done this one yet, but I'm actually planning to do this one. And I think another one um, from the Holdson range in the next week or so, and then, then they'll be decluttered. Um, so good motivation to get some puzzles done. Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing this one, but I'm also looking forward to sort of just having a bit of uh, breathing room in my collection and you know, sending these off to a new home. Um, oh yeah, so this one was called Egyptian Pr Princess. So yes, another Egyptian one. So that's it from that collection. And then the next collection is Renaissance Realm, which is really beautiful. Um, it's by the artist, let me get this right, uh, Olga Suvarova, I believe. Um, so yeah, I mean, I couldn't resist these when I saw them. This one's called Promenade. And it's just, yeah, this sort of, rin like kind of modern but kind of renaissance style and just uh, stunning stunning artworks beautiful like attention to detail yeah just gorgeous like you know but again the quality of the pieces was the issue so same as the other ones just loose fit and very thin I just felt like yeah the the piece quality just doesn't match the quality of the artwork and I've since you know since buying these, uh, this Renaissance Realm series, I've discovered that um, pomegranate puzzles do a lot of the uh, Olga Suvarova uh, Renaissance style um, artworks as well. Um, I don't know if they have all the same ones, but they definitely have a few. And, and I've since like tried one of um, like a different image, but from the same sort of series in pomegranate. And it was just such a better more pleasant experience like I really enjoyed that so yeah that definitely sort of like um, reaffirmed my need to sort of declutter these um, yeah so I'll just quickly show you these they're all a bit similar actually um, this one's really beautiful it's called sisters love the sort of pink and blue of their dresses and flowers yeah really beautiful and then We've got here Love Triangle. This one, her dress is beautiful and the sort of gold panel behind her. And there's a lot of details even in the background of these, like sort of ships and trees and stuff. Um, yeah, really stunning. I also remember like her dress was really hard to do. Actually all of them, like just it's, her painting style just makes put, like the puzzle really difficult for me. Um, yeah, this one's really, pretty and has a little hidden cat um, this one's called the game yeah so i mean you know it's a bit sad to see some of these puzzles go but um yeah especially ones that have such beautiful artwork i think if i had these in a different brand or if the quality was higher i'd definitely be holding on to them so no doubt about that um yeah so it's a little sad to see them go but i just know that there's like puzzles out there waiting for me with even like better piece quality so yeah, so hopefully someone else can enjoy these. Um, yeah, so let's get on to another pile of puzzles to declutter. So this next pile is a bit of a mix. Um, so these top two, I believe, came from, well, actually the, first, the top one came from Amazon. I can't remember if the second one did or eBay. Um, anyway, so I got this one. This one's Romantic Cherry Blossom. I got this one not that long ago I think I saw someone have it on Instagram and thought it was really beautiful which it is um, but it was actually a really difficult puzzle to do it took uh, took ages um, and I was just sort of getting sick of it in the end um, but yeah you know I, I well apart from finding it really challenging and annoying I did enjoy it for what it's worth and um, you know I took photos of it enjoyed it um, but I just don't see myself doing it again um, it's also like one of these weird like kind of no brand puzzles like um, yeah it doesn't really seem to have a specific brand it's one of these ones you randomly find on like Amazon and I think from memory the pieces were okay 
like they're quite thick. Oh, it's like, yeah, they, they were pretty glossy too, actually, which was a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, they're sort of these thick cut cardboard pieces. So um, they actually fit together okay, but they're these ones that have like that color code or number sort of system on the back. So you'll probably see those a lot like on Amazon and eBay. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it was fine. It was, you know, pretty challenging, pretty beautiful. But, you know, I think it's time for it to go find another home to someone who wants a bit of a challenge. Um, yeah. And then this next one was actually in some ways quite the opposite. Very easy to do. And one of this, this one I got, um, I think like in 2020. So, uh, you know, more towards the beginning of when I was really getting back into puzzling. Um, and I, you know, just saw everyone had, you know, these rainbow round puzzles and I, so I found my own one again. It's like, uh, this one's just called blazing with color, 1000 pieces. Um, yeah, no specific like brand, I guess. See, they seem to be so, like sold everywhere. Even now, I think you can get them like all over eBay and Amazon. It was pretty inexpensive. And I think it's sort of, the box is a bit like cheap and weird and yeah, this one's got um, very similar, like they might even be made by the same sort of factory or manufacturer. Um, Cause you sort of see a lot in this style, these square boxes um, online, but yeah, it too has these like thick cardboard pieces that are very like shiny, but yeah, it's got all like letters on the back to help you. Like if you having trouble doing it uh, with the colored side up, you can figure out the sections by looking at the uh, letters on the back. Um, pleased to say I didn't do that for either of these. I like, well, this one you didn't really didn't need to, it was super easy, but yeah, anyway, um, just, I did, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was a really fun puzzle to do. Um, like one of my first sort of rainbow gradients actually. And yeah, I just had a good time, but you know, I've since, uh, got a lot of other beautiful, uh, gradients in my collection, which I, I guess just love more. And I just don't really see myself doing this much more. So off to a new home somewhere. And then, huh, okay. So this one is from Cloudberries and it's called Shells. And if you've done this one, you'll probably know why I'm uh, decluttering it. So beautiful quality, um, nothing, yeah, nothing at all wrong with the quality. Love the Cloudberries quality and fit and everything. Um, but just to be honest, I hated this puzzle. It was so difficult. It was just really, really hard. Um, you, you think looking at it, the, the shells look quite distinctive, but when you're like dealing with it low and up, like as a big 1000 piece puzzle, it was just so hard to tell the difference. The only one that was distinct was like this one at the top. And it was just, yeah, it just turned out to be really not fun at all. Um, yeah, so I just hated doing it, but you know, I've taken my photos of it. So, you know, I sort of have record that I've done it in, you know, um, so yeah, I just never, I don't think I'm ever, ever gonna touch this one again. I just, I don't think you could pay me enough to do this one again. I just dislike it that much. Um, but maybe someone out there will like it. So uh, off it goes. And actually that's, I think the only Cloudberries one that I have ever felt that strongly and negatively about. So all the, there are other puzzles I quite enjoy. Um, this next one, if you're watching my puzzle collection video, you probably heard me sort of talk about this. This is tea set by Image World, but Willow Creek, I guess. And I love the image. I think it's a beautiful, vibrant sort of still life. Yeah, it's like the colors are like gorgeous. But um, from the moment I got it, like I could just see how like sort of cheaply made it was like the puzzle box came quite damaged it's really f like flimsy um yeah like it even smells kind of not great um but the pieces are like they're fairly thickish cardboard but they have quite a glossy finish but the one thing i noticed is like so much of the image on the pieces was cracking already before i'd even like put it together um and then of course, putting it together, I've only put it together once, but it was enough to even make even more of the pieces, like more and more damage. So yeah, um, I can't remember the fit of the pieces. Like 
these look fairly sturdy so the fit was probably okay but yeah I just remember like oh I can see that like yeah there's a lot of cracking occurring which is just yeah really unfortunate because it's such a beautiful image and I've since seen some really like other gorgeous um, puzzle designs from Willow Creek but I'm really hesitant to get any just because I'm like is it just going to be this again like <laughs> So yeah, a bit unfortunate, but I think I'm going to let it go because I just don't really see myself. I, like I feel like the image is beautiful, but I just don't think I can enjoy the puzzle to its fullest if I have to deal with like worrying about damaging it and like worry about the quality. Like that sort of just really takes away from the enjoy, like yeah, enjoying your puzzling experience, I guess. So. Yeah, a bit unfortunate and yeah unfortunate that it's only been done once and already shows signs of like damage and stress and stuff so yeah a bit of a pity and then next from this pile is a whole another series from Holdson so this is the treat your shelf which is so hard to say series and this one's the wine shelves and these are all from Amy Stewart so um, yeah no, no uh, doubt as to why I had to get these into my collection. Um, yeah, they're really beautiful. I really love all her shelf series. Like she's got so many, but they're all just so different and interesting and just all packed with detail. I don't know how she comes up with such like creative things. Like it blows my mind sometimes. Um, but yeah, really beautiful. Um, absolutely no problem with the image. I, I love all of them. They're really pretty, really beautiful. Um, but yeah, just like I said before with the other holds in ones, the quality just doesn't live up to my expectations. It's just thin. It doesn't hold together well at all. Probably like one of the worst um, puzzle brands I've done in terms of like the fit of the pieces. Like I just, I've definitely had lots of puzzles with loose fit, but not ones that have just like moved so much with just a bump. <laughs> you know, and I'm a bit of a klutz. So, you know, I need my puzzles to hold together re like well enough that they don't pieces don't go flying everywhere all the time so yeah real pity um, about these but I've definitely seen a lot of these same images done in other brands like I think Ravensburg has done a couple and I've even got a um, which you might have seen in my collection as well an Anatolian one that's similar to one of these as well anyway so yeah that's the wine shelves one which is really pretty um, this one is the Fantastic Voyage one, which is very sort of steampunk, uh, very grungy. Yeah, really, really gorgeous. I think, I think I've definitely seen this one as a Ravensburger, but it's got like a different name. Um, so I am tempted to sort of try and find, you know, just over time, see if I can maybe replace these with like brands that I enjoy more. Um, so yeah, if I can find this one in Ravensburger or whatever, other brand that I think is worthwhile getting I might get it but I mean I've actually already done all of these except one so you know it's sort of it, I also have to weigh up if like it's worthwhile getting a replacement because I've already done them so am I how many more times am I going to do them um, I mean sometimes I just like having puzzles in my collection because I just enjoy looking at them but I don't always have the time to do them or don't always feel like doing them so yeah, I'll have to think about it. It's it's not a guarantee. And then there's this one. Uh, so this is the garden shelf, which is the one I said I've actually done something very similar in another brand, which I gave away because its quality wasn't good. Um, but yeah, there's an Anatolian one that's on my shelf over here, which is like, it's kind of like a section of this or it's very, it's like a really, really similar style but also a sort of garden thing. I can't quite remember, I have to have a look. But I feel like it's similar enough that I don't need to hold on to this one. Um, but yeah, really beautiful though. So yeah, hopefully these will find, you know, their way to maybe an Amy Stewart fan out there. So, and then the last one from that series is the one I haven't done, but I'm planning to do it in the next week or so. This one's A Stitch in Time. Um, maybe I've seen this one done by Ravensburger. I'm not sure, but probably has a different name. But yeah, it's really pretty, it's sort of, all these um yeah it's sort of like all these women in old-fashioned outfits I think all doing like embroidery or stitching and yeah it's really pretty um 
yeah so definitely nothing wrong with the artwork in these that's for sure but yeah it's just um I just find it really disappointing that you know you buy a puzzle I guess because of the artwork um and then you're sort of let down by the quality and yeah unfortunately I actually bought these before I knew much about different brands so like I didn't have a very big collection at the time and these were some of the ones I got like in 2020 again like the beginning of my puzzle rediscovery and so I was still sort of learning about a lot of brands and had never tried them but just thought like oh the image is so beautiful and then yeah and then kind of was like a bit like oh this quality's not doesn't seem that great and then yeah and then after doing even more puzzle brands I really realized that it wasn't that great so yeah I wish I could say better things about the brand but you know I've got to be honest here and with myself and you guys to just let you know what I think of the brand so yeah so yeah definitely looking forward to well yeah looking forward to putting this image together but not looking forward to the quality so much so but yeah I'll just I'll try and focus on the beauty of the image instead um yeah so we still have a couple more piles to get through um so yeah let's let's get into it so let's go through yet another pile of puzzles to declutter so we've got a couple here from the brand crazy art which i think has recently just changed its name to rosen art i could be wrong but it's definitely changed its name but uh maybe double check to what anyway but these still got the crazy art branding so uh, this one is an empty box except for a duplicate piece uh, because I've actually got this one out on one of my puzzle boards which I've just recently finished. Um, yeah, this one's like pretty gorgeous. Like, um, yeah, just it's just called Butterflies 3 and yeah, lots of butterflies. It was pretty hard to do. But um, yeah, it's I've got actually quite a lot of um, butterfly puzzles in my collection and I just don't see myself doing this one again like especially after just doing it now it was pretty difficult and it looks colorful here but actually like up close it's not that colorful oddly um, also I just didn't love the piece quality I feel like their quality of pieces has changed like I feel like they used to be a lot more chunky and thick cardboard and be fit together really snugly and now they still fit together pretty snugly but they seem a lot thinner and I was sort of seeing a lot of like cardboard splinters and stuff so yeah so I don't know I mean this was just from like my local Kmart it was very inexpensive so I might just like donate this one or something like that um, but yeah it was okay I mean I guess you get what you pay for so you know and then this one is a bit older um, but yeah just a beautiful sort of fantasy unicorn puzzle and what's it called jungle bridge oddly doesn't have unicorn in the name but yeah this is just really pretty um, I held on to it for quite a while because I was quite in love with the image for a while which I mean it's still really beautiful but um, I just didn't do it again so because I thought oh maybe I'll do it again um, but I just never did and have since got other unicorn puzzles in my collection so I kind of feel like they're getting a bit samey um, so I thought I might uh, declutter this one but yeah I, I remember the piece quality of this one definitely being better than the butterfly one but uh, either way they're both very inexpensive and you know I don't mind sort of decluttering them and next we've got a beautiful Amy Stewart, Stewart one by Ravensburger which is actually in its shrink wrap and that's because this is actually a duplicate so I already have and have already done the one in my collection so I don't need another um, I can't remember exactly why I ended up with two I think I don't know but I did and it seems to happen I'm finding it happens more and more now the more puzzles you have in your collection the uh, more duplicate puzzles you end up having so yeah so no reason to hold on to two so I definitely probably probably be selling this one or maybe swapping it with someone for another puzzle but yeah definitely love it no complaints um, well actually my only complaint with Ravensburger is pretty much their puzzle dust which is a bit of an issue but apart from that the piece quality and fit is really fantastic and they have some beautiful artworks and work with a lot of really fabulous artists so yeah but um yeah what was this one called 
the sweet shop yeah so it's all just it's kind of like from her shelf series but it's all just yeah candy and sort of circus themed very fun and just a cute little 500 one and then the next one is a lovely bright one this is a 1500 piece one called frosty treats from buffalo games um yeah this is nothing wrong with this just your sort of standard good old-fashioned buffalo games quality so you know pretty chunky pieces that stick together pretty well um yeah no no issues um but i just thought i've noticed that like i don't have too many large size puzzles in my collection and i think that's partly because i guess i'm just a lazy puzzler who prefers like 1000 piece size and below um i th i think like at the start of my like getting back into puzzling i was feeling very ambitious and got quite a few larger um, piece count puzzles but I've sort of since realized like one my table for puzzling isn't very big so I have to use like a giant puzzle board um, so it just takes up a lot of space in my apartment and also like being a short person with short arms I can't reach I can barely reach the other side of a 1000 piece so having like bigger than 1000 means I have to get up and walk around my puzzle a lot and I just want to sit down and relax while I'm puzzling not get up and exercise so Call me lazy, but well, it's true. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. I did it. I just don't see myself doing it again, um, just because it's a larger piece count. And yeah, I don't know. I just have so many other wonderful, colorful puzzles to get through. So figured might as well give this to a new home as well. And then we have another one, another big piece count from Buffalo Games, a 2000 piece one called this is an Amy Stewart one called family vacation and I did this one not that long ago um, I think like originally when I got a lot of Amy Stewart ones I thought I'm like never letting them out of my collection but I think this is one that I can let go of just because it's just not one of my favorites like it was fun doing it and it's got like a lot of really fun uh, quirky little details but like the color scheme and stuff is just not my absolute favorite um, so yeah I figure like someone else would probably enjoy doing this one so time to pass this one on it's also like very heavy and they take up a fair bit of room and then we've got here a 1000 piece euro graphics one this one's called travel suitcases again i did this one oh it's part of their colors of the world series um it's you know it's basically just like lots of sort of vintage suitcases with like travel stickers all over it but it has a cute little addition of these sneaky little stowaway kittens in poking their heads out of this suitcase um, so it's definitely a cute little puzzle but yeah I just don't really see myself doing it again um, like apart from the kittens it's actually like a very brown puzzle and so I guess I'm a bit over it like I enjoyed it for what it was but then was like I know it's got like interesting stickers and maps and things but it's actually not that interesting of a puzzle really like it's just repetitive suitcases so yeah I don't know it was it was fun to do but yeah I just don't see myself doing this one again so off it goes bye and then this one I thought I'd never get rid of but here we are um okay it's like a, by a really weird brand so it's just this beautiful gradient actually that's not what it looks like it looks like this so rectangle gradient and it's gorgeous colors like beautiful pastel bright pastels it's like called Nuance 1000 piece and it's by Robert Frederick Limited. So I think it's just like one of these random publishing companies. But yeah, basically um, I did it, sort of enjoyed it for what it was, but didn't absolutely love the quality of pieces. They sort of like, the sort of cardboardy pieces that were very glossy, um, but they poke up a bit. Like you can never seem to get them to be all flat at once which is just like really annoying especially when you're trying to take a nice beautiful flat picture of it you just got all these little bits sticking up so that was a bit annoying and also it was actually really hard like I think the green and yellow in this was just so hard to see those colors under my lighting so yeah I found it really challenging um, and you know like I said with the um, circular rainbow gradient I've since like since getting that one and since getting this one you know I've got like even behind me and in my spare room a whole range of really beautiful and probably better 
rainbow gradient puzzles to do that are just like way more, you know, fun, enjoyable, and just like better quality and more interesting. So, you know, this one can, can leave the collection, I think. <sighs> We're getting there, I say, as I look at another pile of puzzles on the floor. Anyway, I've got a three Ravensburger ones here. So this one may not surprise you as to why I'm decluttering it. This is the Ravensburger Black Crypt, 736 pieces. I have done this one. It was pretty excruciating, took photos. It's all on Instagram. Um, yeah, and kind of hated it. So I just don't ever see myself doing this again. It really wasn't fun at all. Um, like I'm glad I've done it and gotten, out of the way, gotten it out of the way and sort of, you know, I was really keen to see what this experience was like and see if I could do this challenge and I did and I don't really care to repeat it. Plus, you know, I've still got a pink one that I have to do and I did the sort of pastel rainbow one, which I really enjoyed. So I sort of like, I'm glad I got those ones and I'll still keep those in my collection for a while. So yeah, I just don't, don't see any point. I did ha did think like, oh, is this something I want to use in a video as a comparison? But you know, that would mean like maybe putting it together and that is certainly not going to happen. So uh, some other lucky person out there can have a black crypt puzzle. And that's pretty much the same reason for this gold one. So this gold one's 631 pieces, also pretty tough. The black I believe is the hardest and I agree at the moment. Um, the gold is not as difficult, but still very difficult. It still took a while. Um, I mean, it looks really cool because it is actually sort of like this gold, not gold foil, but it is like a gold surface. So it looks really cool, but yeah, pretty difficult. Not very fun. Um, looks cool when it's finished, same with the black, but yeah, I just really don't see myself doing this again. And I don't think it's worthwhile holding onto as like a video comparison tool. So off it goes. <sighs> we're getting there, sort of. Um, we have another beautiful unicorn puzzle. So this is just a 1000 Ravensburger. Again, like no problem with the quality in any of these um, Ravensburger ones. This one's called Unicorns in the Forest. What, what a surprise. And it's also by, actually it's by the same artist, Jan Patrick Krasny, who did the Holdson um, Mistress of Pride Lands, the women with the jungle cats. So yeah, it's that very beautiful, like painterly detail, like very realistic painted style and a lot of detail. Um, but yeah, I just sort of felt like this was a very typical unicorn picture and I enjoyed it, but like I have other unicorn puzzles that are just more interesting um, or that I've done that are more interesting. So, you know, I just really don't see myself doing this one again. I think I've got enough still in my collection to enjoy. So yeah, so this one can go to a new home to another unicorn lover out there, I guess. Okay, and then we've got here a couple of Clementoni. <laughs> so you might be surprised that I'm actually giving this one away, which is, um, oh, I don't know if I'm giving it away, selling, donating, giving away, swapping, whatever. A thousand pieces, impossible, impossible puzzle emoji. Um, yeah, basically, uh, I, I don't mind the Clementoni quality. They have nice pieces. The fit's a little loose, so you can't really do a puzzle pickup. Um, but apart from that, I quite like the piece quality and like the boxes are nice and everything. Um, but yeah, it was just a bit of a painful puzzle to do, despite it being really bright and colorful, which is like what I normally love and which is what drew me to this puzzle. I thought like, oh, it looks really fun, but actually it was kind of, I guess being an impossible puzzle was kind of impossible. Like I got there in the end, but it was just really difficult and it ended up being like a real, just dragged on. I guess I'm a bit of an impatient puzzler. So for me, it felt like it took forever. Um, and so I just like, even now I'm like, ugh, I don't wanna ever look at this puzzle again. It was a bit painful to do, a bit like doing the Black Crypt or something. It was just went on for too long. And despite the fun pictures, like there's, they're really repetitive and it's quite difficult. And yeah, so it sort of became not very enjoyable in the end, unfortunately. But yeah, I, I think maybe it's also like this sort of puzzle style's not quite my thing. Um, it's been a bit of a hard lesson to learn, you know, you you start getting into puzzle collecting again and you get all these like puzzles mainly because of how they look 
and then you slowly realize like what you do like and what you don't like and what's your style and what's not and by then you've got all these puzzles you have to do which you may not like anymore <laughs> so you know but that's okay it's like good to find out what you like and don't like so and then this another one from Clementoni is another unicorn one but a 1500 piece one and it is called um, I don't know what's it called oh wild unicorns and actually it's by the same artist as the other unicorn one which makes a lot of sense when you look at it very similar sort of style same sort of unicorns yes yeah, so it's really beautiful um, but yeah I've done it once and I haven't done it again since and that was a while ago so I don't think I'm going to be doing it again and like I said I still have other unicorn puzzles to do and also like I said they they feel like a bit a bit samey after a while you know so especially when they're by all, all done by the same artist it would seem so which is interesting I guess he's really good at drawing unicorns so yeah so yeah beautiful puzzle but um, it's just not for me anymore so it's gonna get decluttered um, so that's it for that pile I do have a, another reasonable size pile of a mix of different puzzles so yeah we'll do that and then we'll be done okay so we're up to the last box of puzzles I promise um, all right so let's just get through them um, so this first one is a cute little 500 piece one from Clementoni and it's just called ginger cat and yeah nothing wrong with the quality just sort of the same as the others like nice pieces bit of a loose-ish fit um, but yeah super adorable kitten um, we have done this one a few times actually um, did it a few times for like puzzle battle last year so yeah I feel like I've sort of done it enough and really enjoyed it um, surprisingly difficult just because of the flowers and all the orange fur but yeah really cute and then the next one surprise surprise is another unicorn puzzle <laughs> Ta -da! this one is a 500 piece one from a duca I think that's how you say the name you see these names like on Instagram everywhere and online but you never hear how they're said so or how they're pronounced so it's up to you to figure it out I guess um, so this one is called unicorns in the forest which is the same name as the Ravensburger one and surprisingly or unsurprisingly it's also by the same artist Jan Patrick Krasny so he definitely gets around he it's clearly uh, well liked for his unicorn illustrations or paintings um, but yeah this one is a really beautiful one very glowy and fantasy has a little castle beautiful pink flowers and colors um, but yeah I've done it a few times and sort of you know had enough of it for now and as you've seen I have plenty of unicorn puzzles so you know this one's gonna go find a home with another unicorn lover out there I think and next up is one from an Australian brand called Funbox. Um, this one's called Surf Is Up. I don't know why it's not just called Surf's Up, whatever. But yeah, 500 piece one. Um, it's just, you know, sort of a like seascape and then beach and wave and surf scene. Um, yeah, I don't know. I've done it quite a few times, sometimes for Puzzle Battle as well. and. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of sick of it now like done it enough times don't really feel like doing it again um, the quality of fun box is not bad actually it's um, they're kind of similar to Clementoni actually where the pieces are quite chunky and thick with I think a linen finish but actually the fit like Clementoni is quite loose um, but you know it's still like quite, quite quite nice to do I guess so and they have some like pretty interesting fun uh, images out there got a couple of their 1000 piece ones to do still so yeah so this one's off to find a new home as well and then this one is the mystery puzzle um, it's so random it's a 1000 piece I guess it just comes in this really bizarre sort of very mysterious box that doesn't show you the name of it or like the picture it just says jigsaw puzzles something or other collection series high quality wood products and basically this turned up like ages ago, like last year, I think, or the year before, um, instead of what I actually ordered from Amazon. So I think I ordered like, I don't know, like a genuine puzzle brand and randomly got this nondescript, non-branded random puzzle. So I've never actually done it. I was going to do it, but I just, in the end, just could not be bothered because I've got so many other wonderful puzzles to do. But it's one of these ones that's like got all the letters on the back and it comes in this odd mesh bag 
which is kind of pretty. And like the pieces seem to be like wood. It actually has like, I'll show you the picture in a minute. It seems to come with like puzzle stands, but they're made out of this like weird wood stuff, which seems to be what the pieces are kind of made out of. Really bizarre. Not quite sure what to think of it all. Anyway, I'll quickly show you what I guess is the image. It's the only clue of what the image actually is, apart from putting the puzzle together. Um, oh yeah, so it's like, looks like, it's quite pretty actually. Like it's this sort of painted colorful deer. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. I just can't be bothered doing it. Um, so I can't tell you what the pieces are like, but it does seem to be one of these weird no name brands from Amazon, but how it ended up getting sent to me instead of what I actually ordered, I don't know. Don't worry, got a refund, all good. But yeah, I just figure I'll just donate it or something. And someone else can have fun putting together the weird mystery puzzle from Amazon. Um, so next we actually have one that's shrink wrapped because it's another duplicate. Um, this one's the Anamorphia Tiger in the Night by Kirby Rosanis, I think is how you say it. Um, yeah, this is just a really pretty one. It's just like this beautiful illustrated tiger. And then it's sort of the back of it's made up of like all these little crazy fun little critters and strange objects, mushrooms and looking at a picture on the back here, all sorts of stuff. But they're sort of like the colors are like a rainbow gradient and yeah, it's beautiful gradient night sky. Yeah, really cool. Um, yeah, I have the other one in my collection still and I've done that and really enjoyed it. Um, I can't remember what the quality's like. I think it must have been fine. Like it's just one of these random like publisher brands, but I don't remember having is any issues with it. So I'm guessing it was perfectly fine. Um, but yeah, if you, you know, you're into gradients and you want something a little bit different, this could be a good option, but yeah, really beautiful, lovely illustration. And then what else? Oh, uh, okay. We've got a few here from the same brand, these are from Arrow. So this one's shrink wrapped as well because it's a, another duplicate. Um, so Arrow, I believe is an Australian brand and it's sold here at our like Kmart. So it's a very like affordable, inexpensive brand. Like I think these are only like $5 or less than $10 each. So that's pretty good. Um, this was this one's called Jazz Cat and it's a very colorful sort of like Cheshire like cat playing a saxophone and this crazy colorful background. So yeah, I actually already have this in my collection. I believe I, I think I won this and there's two others in the collection. So I won the collection from like a little Instagram competition or something, but I actually already had a couple cause I didn't know what ones they were going to send me as my prize, but end up being the cat ones. But yeah, I actually already had a couple. So but that's fine. I'm going to pass it on to someone else. Um, yeah, so looks pretty fun. And then I've got a, ugh, got a figure of myself out here. Okay, yep, yeah, I've got a, another couple of puzzles from the same brand, which I have done. Um, these are though from the Majestic series. So there, there's three in this series as well. And um, ugh, um, this one's called Elk Cottage. And basically the ones in this series are all like these little wood cottages in forests. Um, they're very pretty, very like idyllic very peaceful. Um, I think I've seen them like done in other puzzle brands too. Um, but yeah, very pretty. Um, but the thing is the reason why I'm probably, well, I know I won't do them again is I'm actually not a huge fan of the arrow quality, unfortunately, like, um, it's similar to Holton in that the pieces are very like thin cardboard, very glossy, high sheen, and they don't at all like stay together. So, yeah, if you bump them, your your pieces sort of go flying and end up with puzzle chaos. So yeah, a bit unfortunate because they actually have some really like fun and beautiful images. Um, but yeah, like I just kind of makes the puzzling experience less enjoyable, unfortunately. So, you know, I've done them. They're yeah, very inexpensive and I, you know, don't feel like I need to do this one again. Um, but you know, hopefully someone else out there can enjoy it. Um, they might just get donated or something because they're so like, you know, they weren't, didn't cost much at all. And I don't think I'd really bother try, trying to sell them. Probably not, I don't know. Um, and this one is another very pretty one from the same series called Waterfall Cottage. And yeah, just another lovely like wood cabin or wood cottage with stag and deer and beautiful flowers and waterfall. Yeah, really pretty. But yeah, just a shame about the quality, I guess. Then we're nearly there. 
We've got here this one that's quite old. It's been in my collection for many, many years. And this is the, it's by the brand Be Puzzled, which I believe are still around and they do sort of like mystery kind of puzzles. And this is the Agatha Christie Book and Puzzle Mystery, 1000 Pieces, The Theft of the Royal Ruby. So yeah, you've got a puzzle and you've got this little like a mini novella, novel type thing. Um, so basically the idea is you read the novel and it's a mystery and you don't know who did the crime or whatever. Or, um, and then you put the puzzle together and it like gives you the clues to solve like the mystery. So yeah, so I've done, I did this one again not too long ago and I've done it before like years ago when I first got it. Um, definitely an Agatha Christie fan and had fun doing this and I think the quality was fine actually like looking at the pieces yeah they look fine nothing special but they look okay but yeah you know I've like done it a few times so don't think I really am going to do it again um, but yeah so hopefully someone else who's into mysteries might end up with this one and then we're up to our last puzzles of the declutter so this next one is actually a unopened uh, duplicate. And this is the Ridley's Cat Lovers Puzzle. So yeah, this, I think someone gave this to me, but I already had it, which tends to happen when you have a big collection of puzzles, you end up getting duplicates. Um, but yeah, it's just a fun one of like, basically ends up being like, I guess a sort of poster puzzle of like all the different types of cats. And some of them have cute little accessories or outfits on, and they're all got their name and a little description and they're doing really cute things. and. Yeah, the style, the art style is really cute. Like it's sort of um, semi, like it's a bit stylized, semi-realistic, but also very, a bit cartoony. So yeah, really cute. Um, but you know, I've already got one. So hopefully this one can find a home with a cat and puzzle lover out there. And then these last two are also by Ridley's, um, but they're only 500 piece. And one is the whiskey lovers and one's the gin lovers and they're also these sort of like poster style um, probably can't see that but yeah essentially like they have like different types of whiskey or gin and then like shows stuff from the distilling process so kind of good for someone who's a bit of a whiskey or a gin nerd and you know um, yeah so they're kind of like they're good like gift puzzles I guess for you know that person who you're like oh I know they're into gin or cats or dogs or whatever you can buy them a Ridley's puzzle but yeah to be honest the Ridley's quality is not my favorite like I've done these a couple times and um, they're just sort of cardboard with like that like paper backing and um, I think they fit together kind of tight actually from memory which is part of the problem because after doing them even once or twice the paper backing starts to sort of peel off a bit and can get a little bit damaged because the fit I think from memory was a bit tight like the paper can peel when you're trying to separate the pieces which is a bit unfortunate so yeah like not my favorite but I mean I guess they're sort of just designed to be like novelty gifts they're not really for the hardcore puzzle collector I suppose but you know so yeah is what it is but you know I've had fun doing them did one for puzzle battle um, but yeah time for them to find a new home like the rest of these um, so that's it for all the puzzles I plan to declutter at the moment so I feel like I have picked out quite a few puzzles to declutter. I think my count was about 39, which I think is a pretty good effort so far, um, especially for the start of the year. Um, there's definitely more puzzles in my collection that I am thinking I'll declutter later in the year, but like I either still have to do them or like I'm holding on to them for some other reason. Maybe they're part of a series and I'm waiting to do some others or whatever it is. But yeah, there's definitely more I have in mind that I think might end up leaving my collection later. Um, you know, sometimes it's just things like you realize you don't love the image as much as you once did, like your taste changes, um, or, you know, you discover that actually you don't like that type of puzzle style or that quality of that particular brand, whatever it is, like it's sort of a bit of a learning process, I guess you kind of over time find what you do and don't like and, and your taste change and you, you grow as a puzzler and a person. Um, anyway. I guess let me know what you thought of all my puzzles that I'm decluttering. You know, have you done a declutter yourself or are planning to declutter any? Like, do you tend to keep all your puzzles or you get rid of them as soon as you've done them? Like, I definitely know some people who just do their puzzle and pass it on, whether it's in like a sort of puzzle swap group or sell it or whatever it is. Um, yeah, let, let me know sort of your 
thoughts on puzzle decluttering and your experience with it. Um, so yeah, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can also check me out on Instagram at jigsaw underscore Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.